I would love to welcome everyone to this week's CCL training program. It's a weekly webinar series of Citizens Climate Lobbies that provides CCL supporters like you and I with access to in-depth training opportunities on topics related to climate change and effective climate advocacy. I'll be your host tonight, Brett Cease, and tonight we're jumping into learning all about the Great School Electrification Challenge. We're going to be joined by CCL Youth Action Team Coordinator Sharon Begatel and CCL Youth Leaders for training all about the School Electrification Challenge and how you and your team or your students can jump in. As student teams, CCL Youth are advocating for the passage of an Electrify Everything resolution by their school district's Board of Education and advocating for implementation of a re resolution if their district already has one in place. You can participate and earn points by taking actions to support school electrification, leading to the passage of the resolution in your district. So tonight you can learn more and get all the details as well as get a review of the guide that's been assembled by none other than our amazing presenters this evening. We have a wonderful high school student here, Amakta P from Katy, Texas, part of the electrification group there, as well as the National Youth Action Team. Amakta has been busy and also experiencing, unfortunately, the front line of worsening climate impacts, motivating and driving her participation and being engaged with this empowering opportunity with the challenge. We also have the amazing Sharon Begatel, CCL's Youth and Action Coordinator. As CCL's Youth uh, Action Coordinator, Sharon supports youth under 18 and their adult allies to build a vibrant national youth network within CCL. Sharon comes to us with over 30 years of experience as an educator, curriculum developer, and program coordinator in a variety of formal and informal education settings. From her first days as a first grade teacher, uh, Sharon's twins' passions have been environmental education and empowered civic engagement. What a wonderful union for us to benefit from throughout the CCL network um, to have those passions fit so well here as well. So we have a wonderful lineup. And if we've done our job well at the end of tonight's training, you're going to walk away with the following three learning goals, really being able to understand after we've highlighted the great school electrification challenge as part of CCL's local electrification work and what that looks like. We'll explore the impact and benefits of electrifying everything in your school district. And we'll have the chance to hear directly from students and young adults on how you can engage your students in your district to get involved in your community. So with that, our agenda is really straightforward. We'll start with why electrify schools. We'll talk about how the challenge works. We'll highlight especially a lot of the benefits. We'll make sure to tune in to some of the student experiences, talk through some of the results already from our first cohort. Thank you all so much for being here. Thanks, Brett. Um, I'm really excited to be here as we wrap up CCL's August Electrification Month and at the same time begin a new school year and a new round of the Great School Electrification Challenge. And I'm particularly excited to be here with Amukta to uh, be able to share about student experiences. So let's start with why electrify schools? So I invite you to think for a moment about school buildings in your town or city or wherever you live, in, in your state and across the country. Consider how many heating and air conditioning systems they have, how many cooking appliances, how many lawn mowers, and then think about the school buses, the many miles that they put on transporting students back and forth. And take a moment to visualize the buildings and the buses all across the country, five days a week, nine months a year. In fact, according to the report card for America's infrastructure, there are approximately 84,000 public schools with 100,000 buildings. And that's just the public schools, plus the 480,000 school buses that make up the largest mass transit fleet in the country. Think about that. So collectively, schools are one of the largest public sector consumers of energy. And annually, they produce carbon emissions equivalent to 18 coal-fired plant, power plants and or 15 million cars each year. So what if we could reduce greenhouse gas emissions, 
promote the health of students and staff through better air quality, and create more resilient energy systems overall. And this was part that really thrills me. What if students could learn about real and meaningful civic engagement on something that affects them? We'd like to share with you today the National Youth Action Team's campaign that is doing just that, the Great School Electrification Challenge. The challenge guides students as the most important users of school buildings to use their unique powers to initiate changes that will modernize and decarbonize our schools and create healthier learning environments. So let's take a look at how the challenge works. The challenge is based on Rewiring America's Rewiring Schools campaign. I hope you've heard of Rewiring America. We're partnering with them. And Joel Rosenberg on their staff has been a wonderful support to our campaign. He was just delighted when the National Youth Action Team chose to focus on electrifying schools. His organization had the information, he said, but really needed feet on the ground to put it all into action. And we know that one of the things CCL does best is supply very supported feet on the ground. So national, the National Youth Action Team students and I took the materials that they had created and created the Great School Electrification Challenge. So here's how it works. Students in a school district form a team with a supportive adult as a sponsor. This can be a CCLer or a teacher or a parent or any other adult who can help anchor but not lead the team. The team has to be student-led. So the team works at many levels to urge the school, the school board to pass an electrify everything resolution. In our guide to the challenge, we provide the steps for developing and presenting a resolution, building relationships with the school board and building public support for the resolution. Hope that sounds familiar to you as CCLers. And we gamified the campaign so teams can earn challenge points for the actions they take and win prizes. It's not heavy competition, but it adds a sense of fun. And our National Youth Action Team provides training, guidance, and support every step of the way. So you may be familiar with uh, green schools movement or solar schools initiatives. When we say electrify everything, we mean more than solar panels. We mean replacing heating and air conditioning systems, cooking systems, ground maintenance machines with electricity powered equipment. We also mean switching from diesel powered school buses to electric buses. And we mean installing solar panels on school roofs to generate uh, their own solar electric power. Some school systems already have begun to make, make these changes. A local team can customize its campaign to fit the needs of its school system. Students, of course, don't have to be experts on HVAC systems or the nitty gritty of facilities management. They simply need to ask their school system to make a plan. So as I mentioned, we gamified the process with the point system and a quasi competition with prizes based on points. And these are points earned not for outcomes, but for actions taken by the team. So in providing guidance to students on how to run the campaign and earn the points, we used, of course, CCL's five levers approach. In fact, I think this is a great example of how a single project can use all of the levers all at once. The yellow on this chart here corresponds to lobbying actions. Just like working with members of Congress, students build relationships with members of their school board and they make asks. In the orange, you'll see actions that reflect grassroots outreach, grass tops engagement, 
and work with the media to build political will for the resolution. And then the red at the bottom, you'll see that, that we include points for celebration as part of um, chapter development, or or in this case, it would be team development level, uh, the, that lever so that we can keep, uh, keep it sustainable um, and keep the team moving along. So this chart isn't a step-by-step -step or checklist kind of thing. It, every school district is different, we realize, and each team can customize their own approach to making changes where they are. Over the past year, we've evolved the challenge. Students who attend private schools wanted to be included, so we added a non-public school setting component to the challenge. And through this process, several teams discovered that there was already a resolution in existence in their district but that not much was happening to actually implement it. So this year we've added a beyond resolutions section of our point system. We realize that this is a lot for students to take on, so we want to make sure that they feel really well supported. Each team is giving, given an or orientation to our guide to the challenge, and the guide includes templates for writing a resolution um, including one that's specifically written for more conservative leaning districts. We also have a living resource document with the latest information there that's out there on school electrification. And we provide workshops on topics of interest, particularly resolution writing and uh, teams sharing their experiences. And we have a dedicated challenge intern which I really enjoy. So between the two of us, we can provide individual team support. So whether conservative or super progressive, every school district we've interfaced with has concerns about budget. And I imagine you're wondering about, about that too. So what about funding? Right now, the Federal Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act are making funds available to schools. Transportation grants from the Environmental Protection Agency are also available, and a lot of states also have funding available now. Um, so much of this funding is, is, is there for the asking. The Guide to the Challenge provides information to the teams on what money is out there. And there's a really cool online tool called Electrifying Education um, Calculator. Uh, which calculates the savings of, of an individual school under the Inflation Reduction Act. So we'll put all the resources, if Brett hasn't already, um, in the chat. Um, and finally, since school districts plan ahead for mechanical upgrades, students can speak to a phasing in process whereby electric powered systems replace gas powered systems as they wear out. This approach really seems to resonate with school boards and relieve uh, school board member anxiety. Um, we're not asking for change overnight. We're asking them to make a commitment to phase things in. And that, that's just met, been met very successfully. Additionally, in the long run, electricity is much more cost efficient than other forms of fuels. So in the future, the school district will save money. Simply installing solar panels, one school system in Batesville, Arkansas, says it saves $13,000 monthly. And of course, savings can multiply as schools improve their energy efficiency. Again, students don't have to be experts in funding either. What's important here is that they ask and they start the ball rolling towards an energy transition in their school district. So let's talk about the benefits of a campaign like this. Of course, in the long term, there will be a reduction in carbon emissions and schools will be places that he with healthier environments indoors and out. Those will be outcome benefits. And I believe that there are many benefits purely from engaging in the process. So for CCL chapters and local communities, participation in the challenge is an opportunity to build connections. 
there are many organizations directly working on various aspects already uh, on various aspects of electrification. Green school groups, solar advocates, transportation advocates, climate action groups, of course, children's health initiatives. So this is a great way to pull all of those folks together behind a student-led initiative. It's also a great way to build relationships with Grasstops folks. In Cincinnati, our team brought two members of the city council to speak to the school board. In fact, a school board member commented that the city council there had never, never shown up for one of their meetings before. And in Lake Tahoe, the team brought in the, the chair of the Public Utilities Commission to speak on the team's behalf. And in Los Alamos, New Mexico, the team developed a relationship with their state senator who, who then posed a challenge to them. If the students could persuade the school board, he personally would fund the first electric school bus. So the challenge is a wonderful opportunity to work intergenerationally, engaging youth and adults in your community. In fact, the students in Cincinnati cited the opportunity to work intergenerationally as one of the most exciting aspects of their campaign. And what's in it for students? Most of the students working on this will long have graduated by the time the resolution action steps are actually implemented. But still, there are abundant benefits to them. So I invite you to imagine a group of students in your town working on the Great School Electrification Challenge. What might they gain from this experience? This is the interactive part of our show. So um, you can raise your hand or put in the chat. What, what do you think, um, what do you envision students getting out of this? Yeah, yeah I'd say connectedness to the community and uh, connectedness to uh, the leaders in their communities. Well, I. I think one of the things is that in the future, they'd be able to point to uh, a school that they attended and say, see those solar panels up there and see those you know, heat pumps there. We did that. Yeah. 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 That's, that sense of accomplishment for sure. Yep. I'm sure it also looked good on college uh, applications. <laughs> yes, definitely. It definitely does. Um, resumes, college apps, all of those things. It it look it does it it stands out. Uh, research skills, systems thinking, understanding how how systems work and where to where to mess with things. Um, just just basic advocacy skills that. Of course, we know you can carry into your adulthood in very powerful ways. Uh, presentation skills, um, all of those things. We've we've had students who um, have really gotten into to presenting and have had opportunities. Some of them were invited to present at Harvard Climate Week this year, which coincided mm -hmm. just with our uh, with our conference. But we had um, students able to present so. Um, so it, it really has, has opened up many, many doors for these students, and they've actually become pretty well known in their communities. All right, um, so now let's hear directly from some of our teams. First, we'll hear from Amukta from Katy, Texas. Hi, I'm Amukta, a junior at Taylor High School in Katy, Texas, and I joined CCL with a deep passion for climate change mitigation, driven by my own personal experiences growing up in a community deeply affected by environmental challenges, because down in Texas here, there's a lot of hurricanes, tornadoes, and our power system is very iffy. I would say. So today I would want to share with you why electrification is not just a technical solution, but also a vital step towards ensuring the well-being and future of students like me. So growing up in an area with inadequate air conditioning and reliable, unreliable energy infrastructure, I experienced firsthand how these challenges can hinder educational success so during hot summers, our classrooms often became unbearable, making it difficult to concentrate and engage in learning. The 
lack of proper cooling not only affected our health, but also discouraged our academic progress. I have an instance where I was in a history exam for three hours and all those hours we didn't have air conditioning because of unreliable systems. So electrification really plays a big part in solving these complex problems. So electrifying, electrifying schools means more it means more than just better air conditioning, basically. It means having the consistent access to technology and having healthier learning environments and actual reduced energy costs that can be re redirected to educational resources as well. So I want you to imagine a school where the infrastructure is very sustainable and students have the energy and focus they need to excel. Electrification makes this truly possible, and I've experienced firsthand that it can offer students the chance to thrive in an environment designed to support their full potential. So it, with my team, we've been trying to get with the school board and electrify uh, the KD area and our school district. And I have realized that electrification is very critical because it provides the foundation for a healthier and more sustainable world. When we talk about electrification, we're not just discussing the shift from fossil fuels to cleaner energy resources. We're also talking about a transformation that impacts every aspect of our lives, from the air we breathe to the opportunities that we can access as well. So my thoughts about my journey as well with CCL and my commitment to climate change mitigation is rooted in these experiences, truly. I've seen the difference that um, access to reliable energy can make, and I'm very driven by the belief that every student deserves the opportunity to learn in a healthy, supportive environment by really embracing electrification and really taking those first steps into it. We're not just addressing climate change as it is, we're truly investing in the future of our students, our communities, and our world. Thanks so much, Amakta. Um, the, the KD group uh, was part of our round one and now is um, has signed up for our round two to continue the work. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We look forward to hearing um, more about your, your team's progress. There we go. Okay. So um, now we're going to hear from another one of our teams. This is um, Sophia Martin is one of the members of the Tahoe Youth Action Team, um, which was actually our winning team in round one. And um, this is back um, in the spring when they presented to the Truckee, California Board of Education. Sophia Martin, and I'm a sophomore at Truckee High School. As part of the Tahoe Youth Action Team, I understand that we have set high expectations in this resolution. While we feel that all components are necessary, we understand the imperative nature of collaboratively working with the members of the school district to best mold the resolution to fit the needs of TTUSD. For example, the current range of electric school buses might not be practical with certain long, dis long school bus routes within our vast district. However, we ask that you keep in mind that technology is ever evolving and we will be able to accomplish this goal soon. Right now is the perfect time to accomplish these goals. With copious amounts of funding available, as showcased in the Inflation Reduction Act, there has never been a better time to undertake this project. In relation to concerns, about economic feasibility for these action items. To emphasize, this resolution puts forth an ambitious plan to improve energy efficiency, electrify and decarbonize buildings and transportation, and hire a sustainability manager to prioritize the mitigation of the school district's negative effects on the local Tahoe Truckee climate. We ask that you take the ne next necessary steps to be able to adopt this resolution in order to complete these action items created by the students of TQSD. Thank you.
I've watched that many times and I still love it. <laughs> um, let's take a, a look at what we've accomplished. So we launched the challenge on April 1st of 2023 and ran around one through August uh, April 30th of this, this year. We had 13 teams registered in 12 states and over the course of the year, 10 resolutions were drafted. And you can see some of the other stats listed here with a total of 167 recorded actions. Likely there were more, uh, one of the, the issues we had was, was getting students to actually record um, <laughs> with accuracy, but we're working on that. So um, we do have a lovely digital magazine with great photos and quotes put together by Anna, our spring intern, and we'll put that in the chat as well. So it was it was really exciting when we actually had a resolution passed this past spring. The board of the Cincinnati Public Schools voted unanimously to adopt the resolution presented by to them by the Electrify CPS team. Board members commented that it was the best written resolution they had ever seen. And one of them said that while adults have been working on something similar for seven years, it was the student engagement that led them to finally say yes. We have that on video, it's very exciting. So at the end of round one, we awarded small cash prizes to our winning teams, the Tahoe Youth Action Team in first place, the Dallas Fort Worth Jen Green Team in second place, and the Los Alamos High Eco Club in, in a pretty close third. We also awarded an honorable mention to the Cincinnati team for their stellar work as well. And now we've launched round two. As I mentioned, we've expanded to include school districts that already have a resolution in place, but can use some student advocacy to actually get the implementation uh, moving along. As of today, we have 23 teams registered from 15 states and six teams from round one have come back to continue their work like, like the KD team. Uh, registration officially closes on August 31st, which is Saturday. But if you are inspired by this webinar to get a team going in your area, um, we have some wiggle room. You can just talk with me and we'll, we'll work something out. Um, so last slide here, um, I'll end with a fun quote from Cincinnati Public Schools board member, Mike Morosky, who was a wonderful student champion. Um, and, and I think this encapsulates in, in a kind of a funny way, the spirit of CCL. He said after the resolution passed, said to the students, remind us that we are never doing as much as we can and stay on top of us. So um, thanks so much for listening and for your interest in the electrification challenge. And um, Amukta and I would be happy to answer questions. Well, first off, a huge bravo and congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Sharon, for that excellent presentation and Amukta for your experiences and sharing as well. And we are so honored to be able to spotlight this on the training program and uh, just love hearing about the huge growth and success of uh, round two's cohort. So hey, thank you so much. And thank really you so much. It. Thank you. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Citizens Climate Lobby's training program. You can tune into more episodes anywhere podcasts are available. Inspired by what you heard today? Join Citizens Climate Lobby to advocate for bipartisan climate solutions. Go to community.citizensclimate.org to find more trainings, resources, your local chapter, national action teams, discussion forums, and more. Be sure to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Citizens Climate. We also invite all of our listeners to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more inspiration. Like what you hear? Recommend us to your friends and make sure to give us a five-star rating. It helps us show up on other listeners' feeds. 
Feel free to pass on any suggestions for future episodes in the comments as well. And together, we are creating the political will for a livable world.